What's up, Porsche gents? Welcome to Not Smart Garage. I'm your host, Matt Mormon, and I'm about to do some Not Smart stuff to my perfectly uh, appointed 992 paint to sample Brewster Green GT3 with exclusive manufacturer interior. I'm gonna put a stereo in it because this is what I do. What's the point of having a car if you're not gonna tinker with it, right? So I saw this posted on uh, Focal's website and I'm not a Focal fan, uh, but they came out with this 911 specific, GT3-ish or 911 specific uh, kit. It's some derivation of a Utopia kit. It's not quite the same thing. The tweeters are a little different. Uh, and so I got on the phone, talked to my friend Matt Schaefer. I think he's the, we'll put his, his link in the description if, you, if you're interested in getting something like this. But he comes in this uh, really fancy suitcase like this. It makes you feel real fancy. It's all leather. It's got like the, you know, the Focal insignia on it. So, you know, little wood sides and stuff. It's pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, so I think this is somewhere around 6,000 bucks for this set of speakers. But here's the difference. All of this is Porsche OE bolt-in specific. Uh, so I'll be able to bolt this right into the doors. Uh, so it's a three-way setup with a center channel. Uh, we're actually not gonna use the center channel. Uh, we're not gonna mess with the center channel. I'm actually gonna disconnect it. Uh, so this is a direct factory swap in the Bose or regular system. Uh, you could use it with a factory amplifier, uh, but in normal fashion, I wanna make things more complicated. So my friend Matt, um, he suggested what we do is we do the Helix amplifier. This fits right underneath the passenger seat. Uh, and then we have a Nav TV kit. Uh, the Nav TV, what this allows us to do is to grab the fiber optic signal. Look, you made me a nice little Obsessed Garage Porsche logo on there. Uh, so this will grab the factory optical signal right from the factory head unit. Uh, so we'll be able to get full digital connection to the system. This then essentially tricks the Porsche system into thinking you have a regular factory amplifier. And then from here, we can connect to the 12 channel DSP amp. Uh, so this is a 12 channel, channel amplifier with 14 channels of DSP. Uh, so what we're essentially gonna do is we're gonna convert this boring, terrible Bose factory system into a fully active Focal Utopia-like uh, three-way system. Uh, we're gonna use the factory subwoofer. Uh, we're gonna use the factory rear speakers. We're gonna disconnect the factory center channel. Uh, and then Matt actually has done one of these exact systems in a touring here a couple of weeks ago. So he has a tune for me. Uh, when we get into the software, we're gonna test polarity. That's the one thing, you know, the positive and negative, making sure that they're not flipped. That's gonna be the one thing that's be hard to determine. Uh, so we're gonna test each driver individually, make sure we don't have any cancer cancelization, I don't think that's a word, canceling of the single signals. Uh, the other thing that's gonna be really important for me, so I started with this. This all has, you can see the little connectors. So this, will fall, this means I unconnect the factory speaker from Porsche and I connect the now factory-like speaker from Focal right in the same factory location. Uh, but the factory amplifier is not very good. And so that's why we're gonna be doing this separate amplifier. But what I didn't wanna do is start cutting factory harnesses. Been down that road, don't wanna do that, not on this car. Uh, so everything I'm doing is gonna be fully reversible. I have a harness, we're gonna cut this harness. Uh, so this harness will connect into the, into the, the helix. I believe one of these ends will cut. Uh, I forget which end. I think this, this end of the harness will connect directly into the factory harness. And then we won't have to cut any factory wires. We'll just cut this harness and use this, uh, this pack harness uh, to connect to the system and get it all set up. So I'll share with you how that's gonna work. The major project or the major thing of this is that I have to get power. Uh, so power and ground will have to run through the firewall. I have to pull the carpet back, but this should be minimal disassembly. Uh, I'm actually gonna do the driver's side first off camera so that I don't look like a total idiot. Uh, it's been a while since I've taken one of these apart. Uh, and then I'll know a little bit better what needs to be done on the passenger side and we'll grab the camera and show you that. I'm gonna do some sound shield sound deadening as well in the door Doors. That, what Matt was telling me, is one of the uh, weak points of the car is that the doors have pretty thin metal in order to keep the cars light. Uh, and so we can't send tons of bass uh, to the doors, even with the sound deadening. Uh, and so that's why there's a little factory sub up underneath the um, 
the dash. I didn't want to do an aftermarket stereo uh, a subwoofer box, uh, so we're going to utilize that. And he says this thing rips. So I'm excited. I'm excited to do this. Uh, pricing on this, so this is 6,000, around 2,000, around 1,000. These are like 110 bucks a piece, 50 bucks for the wiring kit. I think the harness was probably 100 bucks, a couple hundred bucks, something like that. Uh, so I think it's, I paid around $9,500 for all this stuff. Uh, and then my labor is gonna be my labor. I was talking to Matt, I said, you know, how long do you think this would take? He said they'd probably charge three days labor. Uh, so it would probably be about 42, 4,300, 5,000 bucks at the most uh, for install. So you're looking at around a $13,000 installed system uh, is about what, uh, what this will take to get this done. So we're gonna do it and uh, hopefully we won't mess anything up. I uh, hope, uh, hope you enjoy uh, getting in the, uh, <laughs> sitting on a stool next to me and watching me mess up my perfectly good car. Good news, the exhaust is on the car, no mistakes, everything looks good there. I've done this quite a few times, so uh, I think we should be okay. Let's get started. All right, now that I know how to do this, it should go pretty smoothly. Let's not count our chickens, but uh, this is the one piece, when you take this off, it doesn't quite go back on the way I would like. So this, when you first take it off, I already pulled it off once, but it pops off, there's a little tab here, uh, and then this guy comes off as well. <clears throat> and then what I'm gonna do is just pop this. There you go, just throw that aside. All right, so then right here, there's a little rubber grommet spot. You have to pull this back, let me get the tool. Pull this off here. pops off, there's three screws there. They're T20 somethings. Take these off. The driver's side came apart, went right back together. Piece of cake. This one has a little Loctite on it. <clears throat> Skin wedge tool is super useful for this job. Even though it's metal, if you use it right, you can do this without damaging anything. So then there's another screw right here. This one also has a little Loctite on it. By the way, the battery's disconnected because we're gonna mess with the airbag here in a minute. So it's best to just disconnect the battery and not test your luck. So that aside, this is now ready to come off. So four screws. And what we do, we push up, push up. And I'm gonna grab this tool here, so I just have a uh, snap ring tool so I can pop the release off. It's a little easier that way. All right, so you've got this guy right here. This is where I take this little snap ring tool. I'm gonna spread it apart. push. There we go. And then you just kind of wiggle this past. There's a little safety there that you can kind of angle it. There's that little screwdriver. I swear, the other side I didn't have to take this little safety stop off. It just popped right out. It's like a little, little bridge there. On the other side I could just turn it at an angle and it just came right off. This one going to sound treat this because these door cards make lots of noise. But first we're going to take out our speaker and make the swap. I 
So the really cool thing about this system, these Molex plugs plug right in. So that's the bows. And then we're gonna swap it with this guy. Now, remember, as I mentioned when I opened the video, we're not gonna swap the center channel. We're gonna disconnect the center channel. So in normal Mormon fashion, we're modifying a little bit. What do you think? Would you save this box? Maybe I should just put it in storage. If I did uh, take this and put this car back to stock, which I doubt I ever would, I'd probably just leave these speakers in. Even if we took the amplifier out, I need my Weira T-handles, ratchet and key handles for this. That's annoying using that little thing. So there's our Focal, their factory plug on it. So then we can take this guy. in the same way plug and play I'm not sure why they put a gasket on this speaker because they didn't do it on the other one the other one needs a gasket I'm hoping I don't have to pull the door apart again okay so now that's ready now let's do our sound treatment so we have to do this panel and in the inside of the door so I used a whole roll of this on the uh, on the other side on the driver's side. So we're gonna use the whole roll of this on the passenger side. So I made a couple of little templates here that I used. So we'll cut out this piece here. Just have to lengthen a little bit. Two, let's take this and make it a little bit longer. I think these rolls are like 110 bucks or something like that. So not cheap, but not unattainable. Especially when you're talking about a $6,000 pair of speakers. There we go. That's a little bit smarter. So now I'm going to trim this here. Yes, I mean, when you have a eight inch and three inch in the door. That causes for some potential vibration. So we're going to conquer that here with this, or at least combat it. Lord only knows how much these door cards cost. <laughs> and we're, we're just doing what we do. Actually, this piece, we'll take care of this spot here. So, put that in place there. Okay. I think I did the other side a little prettier. Oh, I do want to do a piece up here. I did the other side a little bit prettier than this, but that's going to help. Do this, and so I made a little Pac Man piece. I think, let's see if I can do this correctly. Yeah. Looks pretty good. That was the easy part. Now we gotta go do the door. But first, we gotta pull the speaker out, the factory speaker out. Okay, let's take this. Pretty cool, they got an eight inch woofer mid-range in the door. Now there's actually a subwoofer somewhere up under the dash as well that we're gonna tap into our Helix amplifier. But I think for this video, I'll just show you the system and we'll show you the install of the speakers and then we'll do another video for when we do the, the amplifier. Cause you could just roll this with a stock system. And I'm actually probably going to just turn the thing on and rock this system with these speakers for a little bit. And then I may do the amplifier next week. 
That's what I'm thinking I might try. So we also need to pull these out. Because we're gonna get in the door and add some weight to the car. The, the 20 pounds that I took off of it, 25 pounds I took off of it with exhaust, we're gonna put maybe a few pounds back. This stuff is a lot lighter than dynamat. Maybe five pounds, 10 pounds, or yeah, five pounds. I've lost about 20, so yeah. I think we're good. It's still a net positive. So there's the old paper cone bows. Not great. All right, so what I did here in this section of the door, I just use a sheet of paper just to give me a guide, and give me a rough idea of where things need to be. So we're gonna do a piece in here. I just take an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And I just kind of want to see where it can fit in here. Yeah, so I can get a eight and a half of paper. <laughs> if you were a better craftsman, I'm sure you could just uh, use a tape measure. But. Apparently I'm not. So I'm gonna come out to like here. I did it backwards, but it'll still work. So that gives me a little bit of... Now I need to get it underneath there. And I need to get it back in the door as far as I can get it while it's wanting to stick. Looks pretty good. Okay, let's do this piece here. Yep, it's gonna work great. Try to do it in as big of sheets as I can and get it in there without it. Okay, nice and tacked down. All right, so let's do this piece up here. because so I'm gonna put a little piece there I'm also gonna do this frame and then I'm gonna build a little box, if you would, it will, right here. Tuck that button underneath. I'm gonna stick it in that little groove and we'll do a second piece. Cover all that up. All the way back into the door. All right, so let me cut a piece for here. because this is where the speaker's going. I wanna just kinda build me a little, little sound barrier, a little soundproof box here. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna put the speaker back in. So, this is an eight inch driver, but Thing I hope I don't, oh, never mind. It does have a little foam gasket. Never mind. I was thinking it didn't. Put it in the proper way so that the wire was in, it was right here. I think that's the spot. So if we weren't doing an amplifier, you can see how, how easy this would be. I don't know why I keep insisting on doing this kind of stuff myself. I just don't really have a world-class stereo guy. Local. Reasonably local. Not that I'm a world-class stereo guy, but I'd just rather uh, do it myself. So, if the doors weren't so, and door cards weren't so flimsy, we could really get a whole lot of output out of these eights, but that's why uh, the tune that Matt sent me is going to utilize the factory sub. Even though it's junk, we're gonna get quite a bit more output out of that sub because we're gonna have a much better amplifier than the factory amp. So then we'll take these guys, pop them in place, and we're in. Put 
this back in place. I wish I did that backwards. Okay. We slide this sucker in. Gosh, you gotta love Porsche. Look at that. Beautiful. Back in place. Take this off. This will tell us if everything's lined up. Put this plastic piece back on here. Put this screw back in. back on and then this thing's annoying as crap I can't get them to snap back in place let's see out this little wire through the hole so you got this little clippy thing here have to route that through but see the problem is this never really bites on this and it's plastic so I'm not sure why it doesn't doesn't quite bite again Wire back in there. See, it never really, maybe it's a one-time use thing. So from the factory, it's quite a bit tighter than this. And it was a lot harder to remove. So I don't know if I gotta buy new ones or what, but that's not ideal. All right, let me pull the tweeter out, show you how to do this. This is actually pretty easy now that I know how to do it. So what we need is a flathead screwdriver. So what we do here is you take this, pop it loose, then in here there's a little channel and it's actually better if you get a light so you can see where it is. There's a little uh, clip and there's a tether on this. Well, I guess I didn't need to do it on that one. But normally what you have to do is push the screwdriver in and just pop this. There's a little, there's a little clip there. And then we take Pulled this back before. Yeah, that allows it to release. Okay, so that's all we need to do and just let that hang. We don't have to worry about taking the tether off. And then I'm gonna take my skin wedge tool, gently put it in, turn. And then this will come out. Be careful not to scratch your leather. That comes out. Now we got our tweeter. You look through the window here and we just pry it out. Turn it sideways. We just kind of walk it out. Oops. That's not what I had in mind, but that'll do it. And so there's cheap little soak dome Bose tweeter. Probably paper dome. And so we take a new tweeter, new beryllium tweeter, and notice it has the same Molex. And we just pop it in place in the same location. Now this won't seat all the way, so it doesn't go all the way in like the other one did. It sits a little taller. Tuck the wire back in out of the way. So we can see our beryllium and then it just sits like that because it's a little bit fatter but there's room in our bracket here so then you've got to make sure that this plastic piece here when you're sliding this in it's a little bit tricky one there's a tab there's a tab in the middle and there's a, there's a pin here, but there's also a thing where you need to line up this plastic piece here that I found that was kind of tricky. So what's easiest to do, take this off. That gives you some room to maneuver this guy. In. This piece here needs to slide back. Uh, when it pops out, it. Yeah, you have to slide it back a little bit. 
and it blocks you. There it is, right there. So when that tab's there, you're good. That's it. And we're in. We obviously had to fight the other side for a whole lot longer trying to figure out what's what. And that's a wrap. So the next step in this process will be, I'll take this seat out, I'm gonna take this trim out, take the fuse box holder off, I take the, the mat out, obviously, pull the carpet back, and there's a metal plate here, and then under there's where the factory amp is, and that's where the helix and the nav TV is gonna go, and that's where all our wiring's gonna happen. But I'm gonna do that next week, maybe next month, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and so, yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, it's not that big of a project. That that was one of the things I was worried about was doing all this stuff. It's interesting that puts a little stitching on the door there. So I do have to figure these guys out. I don't like that at all. I don't know why that doesn't freaking go in right. I fought that for like an hour on the other side where this should be tight. It's in position, but it it won't clip into its a good spot. So if I figure that out, I'll let you know. But uh, yeah, that's uh, step one of the stereo. Um, and step two will be the amplifier maybe next week. See you then.